Today, lesson 24B, Volumes of Prisms. Uh, today, we're going to really extend on uh, an idea that you learned in the sixth grade, and we have to sort of undo also uh, because of the way that you probably learned it in the sixth grade. We're going to have to sort of undo that thinking, and uh, what I'm talking about is the idea of finding the volume of a rectangular prism, but we'll get to that um, in just a second. Okay, so a little bit of background knowledge. In the sixth grade, you learned that to find the volume of a rectangular prism, you would multiply the length times the width times the height. And I always hate the fact that it's taught that way because it doesn't really tell you exactly what's happening. And then in the other cases, well, what if it's not a rectangular prism that you're trying to find the volume of? What if it's a trapezoidal prism or a triangular prism or some other sort of prism? Well, this idea of length times width times height uh, doesn't work. For example, that doesn't work in this one or in this one. The shape on the left is a triangular prism. The shape on the right is a trapezoidal prism. And length times width times height uh, that doesn't work with those types of figures. So we have to sort of undo that kind of thinking and get to a method that really works on any sort of prism. And in fact, works on any sort of cylinder as well. And so, um, before we get into that, why do we learn about volume? Well, finding the volume of a figure tells us how much space is available inside the figure. <clears throat> so if we have this large water tank here, uh, how much water will this tank uh, hold, which happens to be in the shape of a cylinder? That's an example of volume. How much water will fit in that tank? Or perhaps this um, concrete, how much concrete is found inside the enclosed area? In other words, that's in the shape of a rectangular prism. So that's just two of the many, many uh, uses of volume. So volume of prisms, write that down please. Volume is equal to the area of the base, whatever that base shape happens to be, times the height of that figure. All right, so area of the base, uh, the shortcut way of writing what that formula actually is, we usually use the capital B to represent the area of any base, and uh, we usually use altitude as a word that represents the height of a figure and we do that so to not confuse it with the height of the base because sometimes people get confused when they have height and height talking about two different types of height. So if we sort of put all of that together, generally the formula given to find the volume of any prism or any cylinder for that matter is uh, volume is equal to the area of the base times the altitude, and you should write that down as well. And that's how I will refer to the volume of any shape with parallel bases. <clears throat> volume is equal to capital B, which represents the area of the base times the altitude. And once again, altitude is referring to how tall a figure is. So what we have to do is first of all we have to remember how we name three-dimensional figures and this comes from a previous lesson where the thing we're trying to focus on is what the name is because the name tells us exactly how we're going to find the volume of the shape. For example uh, this shape right here, a triangular prism, that's the name of that shape that helps us tell that tell, tells us basically we need to find the area of the triangle which is a base and multiply it by the altitude and so on all right so what defines a base well bases are always going to be in in the terms of a prism or a cylinder they're always parallel to each other So all prisms have two congruent bases, and they are always parallel to each other. Now, some people like to refer it as top and bottom. Well, that's okay, but sometimes shapes are on their side, and it's a little harder to tell um, what the bases are if it's on its side. 
Okay? Now, where is the altitude? Well, it should be obvious to you in this case, uh, let me switch pen colors here, that the altitude is that right there, how tall that shape is. So we're going to do a little bit of work on uh, what the base could be. So what is the shape of the base? So what's the shape of the base in this figure? Just tell me. It's a triangle because it's a triangular prism. Where's the altitude? Well, it should be obvious to you that the altitude is right here. And we need that altitude to completely find the volume of that shape. What shape is the uh, base on this one? Square? Could it be a rectangle? Yeah, yeah it could be because uh, we don't have to say that this is a base and this is a base in a rectangular prism. Uh, we could also say Instead, that this is a base and this is a base right there, those two sides. And if we use those as the bases, then that would mean that this is the altitude um, right there. <clears throat> What's the base in this one? Tell me, please. It's a triangle. Okay? What's the base in this one? Now, uh, coming back to this... Uh, you know, I'm asking where the altitude is. The altitude in this one is actually right here because this is a triangular prism that's, that's lying on its side, and we have to sort of keep those things in mind. Uh, in the new shape that I just put up there, what is the uh, base? It's a circle. So we would find the area of the circle and multiply it by the altitude. It's a cylinder. What's the base? What? Hexagon, yeah, so we have to find the area of the hexagon and multiply it by the altitude there, all right? So remember, volume is equal to the area of the base times the altitude. So if we have a rectangular prism like this, we would find the area of the rectangle and multiply it by the altitude. In the triangular prism here, we would find the area of the triangle right there and multiply it by the altitude, okay? All right. Now, sometimes, um, I, and this is our official number one, sometimes uh, you're given the area of the base. So in this, this is, uh, well, the first thing I want you to do is write down the name of the prism. What kind of prism is this one? Hexagon. Yeah, hexagon, or we usually say that that's a hexagonal prism. And now I want you to find the volume of that. All right, so sometimes we're given the area of the base, which is less work. So for this hexagonal prism, we find the area of the hexagon, which is already 40 units, and the altitude is 7 units, and that would make the volume of that 40 times 7, which is 280 units cubed. Now that brings up another point from last week's quiz. Uh, most of you remember to put units. A few of you, you left off units, okay? This one, there are no units given, so that's why we just say cubic units or units cubed. So we do need to have some sort of labeling, okay? So for these next few problems, this is what we're doing. We're naming the figure and then finding its volume. All right, everybody do the same thing for number two. Name it, find the volume. So number two, the name of that is a trapezoidal prism because the base is a trapezoid. The, if you can look at it, the front and back of it are trapezoids. They are parallel to each other, and that's what makes that um, a trapezoidal prism. So we would find the area of the trapezoid, which is already given to us. Uh, that's 354 units squared. And the altitude, this thing's like lying on its side, if you want to think of it that way. The altitude is 4. And so the volume of the trapezoidal prism is... 1,416 cubic units. Let's keep going here. And as you're figuring this one out, it's usually at this point somebody asks, well, how do you find the area of a pentagon or a hexagon? Well, that takes a little bit more advanced mathematics to be able to actually figure that out based on various pieces of information you might be given. And that's why in those types of shapes, I'm just giving you the area of that base. This is, since the base is a pentagon, this is a pentagonal prism. 
And to find the volume of that, we would need the area of the uh, pentagon, which is given, times the altitude, which happens to be 2. And so that would make the volume of this pentagonal prism, uh, it would be 294 cubic units. All right. Last one of this type before we go on and I have you actually find the area of the base. Since the base is a triangle, this is a triangular prism, the area of the triangle is 63, the altitude is 8, and so that would give us a volume of the triangular prism, uh, it would be 504 cubic units. All right, same idea, but now I'm not giving you the area of the base, you're going to have to figure that out. So write down the name of the prism and then find the volume. Cubed? Yeah, okay. Yeah, this is a rectangular prism, so we need to find the area of the rectangle. Now, you know, you've got a bunch of choices in this one, but I have a feeling most of us chose that one as the base right there, because a lot of times it happens to be the bottom. And uh, the top of it is parallel to it, the top of that box, if you want to think of it that way. So the area of the base is 50, and the altitude is 7, and so 50 times 7 gives us a volume of the rectangular prism of 350 inches cubed. Next shape, find, name it and find the volume. This, of course, is a trapezoidal prism. We need to find the area of the trapezoid, which happens to be right there. And uh, to find the area of the trapezoid, it's base 1 plus base 2. Well, base 2 is 11, but base 5 or excuse me, base 1 is actually 5 because that's the pieces of information that you need uh, from that picture of the prism right there. The 6, we don't even need that. I told you that there would be extra information in there. So we find the area of that trapezoid and we multiply that by the altitude of the prism, which happens to be 8. And so that would give us uh, a volume of 256 cubic units. Any questions about that one? If units are not within the picture from here on out, we need to still write the word units or abbreviate it, but we, we do need to have some form of units, okay? All right, a couple more problems and then we're finished. Here is number seven. We have a triangular prism here. The area of that triangle is 12 because these are the pieces of information we need for that triangle. The altitude of that prism is 4, and so we have 12 times 4, which happens to be 48 cubic feet. All right, I'm pretty sure this next problem is the last one uh, of the day. And this is a tank, a water tank, uh, that the military uses. It's a blueprint of that. And we're trying to figure out how much water will fit in that tank. But I guess what you need here is you need some valuable pieces of information like that, like that, and like that. With your shoulder partner, come up with the volume or how much water will fit inside that tank. Essentially, this tank is a triangular water tank or triangular prism where uh, this shape down here is the base, and there's another one down here, of course, uh, but the numbers that we need are on the front, and actually that's a right triangle, so we need to find the area of that front right triangle with a base of 38 and a height of 31, and then the altitude of that tank is 53 inches, and so that leads us to something like this, and the volume of that tank is 31,217 cubic inches, so that is how much water will fit inside of it. Any questions? All right, we are finished.